What happens if your products are really successful? Let's say there's a huge demand for your e-commerce products, but you just don't have the capital to fill that demand. What do you do? Turns out there's a service called inventory financing that can sometimes help in situations like this. That's why we've brought on David Koifman, the VP of Sales at Kickfurther, a company that specializes in inventory financing. We're going to cut right to that interview in just a minute, but real quick, my name is Brandon. This video is brought to you by Fulfillerite. We ship orders for e-commerce and crowdfunding. Link below for more details. Quotes are free. Now one last quick note, we edited with a light touch on this interview because we wanted to keep it simple, a little bit lo-fi and honest, just like two professionals on a Zoom call. All right, let's cut to the interview. All right, so David, first of all, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Brandon. It's awesome to be here with you. Absolutely. So to start us off, can you briefly explain to me what Kickfurther is and what the company does? Kickfurther is an inventory financing platform. We've been around nine years now, and our goal is to provide business owners who either produce or purchase physical goods and then sell them later at a profit to have access to the capital to pay for the, the goods as they produce them. Um, essentially, every single business that is growing fast. The faster they're growing, the more they feel this cash flow pinch. Um, it exhibits a, a tightness when they have to pay for stuff that they plan on selling, but it takes so much time from the moment that they have to issue the payment to their manufacturers or their raw materials producers until the point in time where those materials turn into finished goods and then get sent to a buyer. And then sometimes, even get paid for by the buyer months later based on payment terms. Um, so there's a variety, of, a variety of different timelines that can occur from point A to point B. And um, we've developed a program that um, is custom built for every customer's unique timeline case to provide them the capital to pay for the stuff and not require their payments until the stuff gets uh, turned into cash on the other side. So it's interesting because it sounds like what you guys do essentially is if a company is doing really well, they've got a product that is just going to be a smash success and you know this and you have the data to prove this, you just make sure that they are not limited by the amount of capital they have available to them um, in order to meet the demand that's there. Exactly. Imagine you have an opportunity to produce an order for somebody like Target for the first time ever. And so you've been selling your product on Shopify through your own website and it's taken off and sales are increasing. And every time you place an order with your manufacturers, you're paying a little bit more because the order quantity is increasing a little bit. But now Target comes to you and they say, hey, I'm going to place an order that exceeds everything you've done in the last 12 months. So all of a sudden you have to double your biggest previous order ever. How are you going to pay for that? Right. And some businesses actually have to say no to those opportunities because they don't have the cash available. And um, so there's a lot of different ways to access cash. And I think we'll be discussing that in more detail today. Inventory financing is the method that we've developed that intends to align most closely with the cash flows of this type of business. And that makes a lot of sense because it would be terrible to be in a company's situation like that and say, well, we're 500 bucks short. We cannot produce this massive run for Target. That's no fun for anybody, not for the business, certainly not even for Target. Um, but you had mentioned uh, just a second ago, inventory financing. So for those who are unfamiliar with the concept, can you explain how that works? Inventory financing is not a, a new concept. It's been around for, I would say, over 100 years, and it's been tackled from a number of different angles. Um, it's interesting because inventory is the collateral in all of the deals that do inventory financing. Um, we operate a unique agreement uh, based on consignment where we're actually purchasing inventory on behalf of the business and then they're selling it on our behalf uh, on consignment, which is it's kind of like if you think of a consignment store where you bring them a couch and then they sell it for you um, and then you take in the proceeds minus their fee. That's how our deals work. Um, so 
inventory is collateral, you know, as opposed to other financing methods where you have like your entire business as collateral for say a bank loan or a line of credit, um, or for say accounts receivable financing where the accounts receivable is the collateral. And that would be actually applicable in our previous target example, where target places an order, let's say for a hundred thousand worth of goods, you deliver those goods to them. And then they say, cool, thanks. We'll pay you in 60 days. And a, a, an accounts receivable financing program at that point would say, all right, they're going to pay you a hundred K in 60 days. How about we'll pay you 90 now, and then we'll get paid by them 60 days from now, we'll take our fee. Um, and then we'll give you the balance. So that's, that's how accounts receivable financing works. And that's been around for, for ages. The difference now is that so many businesses are selling through marketplaces and through their e-commerce website, and you have no accounts receivable because we're, you're not delivering a big order to somebody who's paying you at a later point in time. Um, so you have these multiple channels for delivering product to customers, and they all have different terms. Like if you sell a one widget on your website, you're getting paid for it instanta instantaneously. Some, some buyers buy on... 10 day terms, some buyers buy on 30 day terms, some buyers buy on 60 day terms. The funny thing is those buyers are actually financing their own inventory by giving the terms to begin with, right? Because they don't have the cash to be paying everybody up front for stuff. What they're doing is they're taking the stuff, they're selling it, they're turning it into cash and then they're buying it from you, right? So that's kind of their their own little ver in internal version of in inventory financing that just is in industry standard for all big retail. Mm -hmm. And you're just kind of opening that up to a larger e-commerce market. Yeah, we're, we're trying to target multi-channel or any individual channel and, and sort of giving them the same treatment, but hyper-focused on solving their unique problem or their combination of channels um, as a whole. Now, how does this compare in terms of advantages and disadvantages to something more like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, like business loans or credit lines? It depends on who the provider is. I would say, you know, I, I'm trying to be educational here, so I'm not just going to say kick further is the best for everything. Um, a bank will give a line of credit or a small business loan that will be the lowest rate you can access. Outside of friends and family, that's your number one choice. The problem with that is that often they decline businesses that are in high early stage growth because they're looking for a longer track record or they'll provide a limit that is nowhere near what you're looking for. So we look at it as part of the capital stack. And so you have a number of different places where you get your money. One of them might be your own personal bank account. You know, you, you might be looking at line of credit or a loan from a bank. Um, you might be looking at raising an equity round to bring cash into the business. Inventory financing is something to definitely consider as part of that mix. Then you have revenue financing, you have accounts receivable financing, purchase order financing. These are all different programs, different products to look at. Mm -hmm. Now, that makes sense. Now, because the banks generally, they're going to be ones looking for just something that's been around for a while. That's that's kind of how they like to roll. They like to minimize their risk. Um, but I'm assuming that you probably still have some qualifications in place that kick further requires before you're able to provide inventory financing. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, it's it's funny. The name kick further came from like uh essentially a play off of Kickstarter. So Kickstarter is the first production run, right? You have a great idea, you've developed a prototype and you've contacted a manufacturer about producing your first major production run. And now you go to Kickstarter to fi finance your first production run where a community of participants who is interested in buying the product is also financing their own unit of products, right? And so you gather that money together, you pay your manufacturer and then you'll fulfill the order to all the customers. Now, what happens next? You want to make another run, right? And you want to start selling it on Amazon. How are you going to pay for that production run? Because each customer isn't always willing to wait a year for their one widget to arrive, right? So that's kind of the genesis 
of the platform is what happens next. And the idea is you've worked out the kinks, you've produced your stuff once or a handful of times and demonstrated your ability to manufacture quality control, sell, deliver product, take in revenues and run your business. And so for that reason, we require 400K in trailing 12 months sales in order to qualify for inventory financing with Kickflader. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense so far. So kind of on a related note, can you break down the costs that are associated with inventory financing? We look at it on a cost per month basis. So essentially, you are looking at the amount of time between when you need to pay your manufacturers and when you expect the cash to start coming back in uh, from the sales of that particular inventory run. That's when you start making payments. And then once you've seen 80 to 100% of the cash come in from those sales, that's when you expect to stop making payments. So Every deal has a unique duration based on your projections as a business owner um, and the total duration uh, multiplied by the rate per month is what your cost is going to be. And I would say as a rough estimate, one to two and a half percent a month is sort of the range and where you fall within that range is based on the risk of your business. We look at data um, that comes from bank accounts, uh, accounting platform and sales platform. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say somebody does secure inventory financing. How is that going to affect their cash flow and their working capital? The idea is to streamline the cash flow, right? So you you want you don't want to have lumpiness in your cash flow where your all your money is coming in when you sell the product and the rest of the time you're just spending. Here you're getting access to money to buy product before you actually sell the product. Um, It's also freeing up cash for whatever other needs the business has. Um, For example, if you need to spend on equipment or uh, marketing or some sort of R&D, this sort of smooths out your cash flow so you have access to capital uh, more frequently than just when your product is selling. Makes perfect sense. So have you observed any trends or shifts in demand for inventory financing in the last five years, particularly because e-commerce has changed so much? Yeah, I mean, five years is a, is a big period in time. And I've actually been with Kickfurther that entire time. Um, it's interesting how things have changed with the relationship with China and also the pandemic. It's, it's really just driven businesses to want to buy more, less frequently. So they're placing bigger orders, maybe instead of four times a year, three times a year or twice a year. Um, and there's a couple things that they're, they're essentially trying to address risk and costs. So risk comes in some sort of delays in fulfillment or logistics where, you know, they experienced that it, containers were sitting in port for a while or waiting to go out to sea um, and they were unable to get their inventory on time. So, uh, and especially when you have multiple orders that are sort of staggered throughout that delay process, it becomes even more painful. So it's important to get larger quantities of inventory in house so you can be more resilient to those sort of events. Um, And the other thing is if you place bigger orders, then one, you can save on logistics costs. So you can maybe fill a container or have multiple containers. Um, And two, probably most importantly, you can get discounts from your manufacturer because you're placing larger orders. Um, And so that's really the best way to drive down costs. And a third thing is um, a lot of people will get terms from their manufacturers. And essentially that means the manufacturer is offering them some sort of inventory financing And most of them are not in the business of finance and do this just so they can close more deals. So if you bring them an opportunity to maybe reduce their margin a little bit, but not deal with having uh, payments due after you sell your inventory or after you receive it, they are often likely to offer you a discount in favor of the terms that they're currently offering you. Mm. And that just makes a lot of sense because if you do financing on a regular basis, you have a pretty good idea of like when you're going to get paid back. You get a you, you get a good sense of that, I imagine, after a while. Manufacturer, they just specialize in manufacturing. Like sure, they, they know what they're doing with billing, but um, 
they might charge a higher percentage than your rates just for being able to send that stuff out in advance and have it on net 30, net 60, net 90, or whatever they need to do, just convince people to buy the bigger load. They would need to because they're almost certainly less sophisticated in evaluating business risk. So they need to cover their losses um, more conservatively. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so with that in mind, where can people learn more about KickFurther? KickFurther.com is a great place. Um, also, feel free to email me directly, david at kickfurther.com. Um, and our, our team is great at answering questions. You know, may, many businesses do come to us a little bit before they're qualified. We're happy to be a resource. Uh, we have a number of partnerships that may help businesses grow faster and also can give you guidance for when you are ready to engage with us. Yeah, absolutely. And also, in addition to that, I'm going to include the Kick Further social media down below. So you can also check that out if you would like to follow Kick Further on, well, on whichever channels you're on. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Brandon. That was a great chat. Thank you for watching this interview. I appreciate it, and I know that David at Kickfurther does too. Details on both our companies are in the description. And just in case you missed the name earlier, my name is Brandon, and I'm here on behalf of Fulfillright. If you need help shipping your orders, go to fulfillright.com and request a quote. We've shipped for thousands of e-commerce companies before, and we're happy to help you too. The quote doesn't cost a thing, so if nothing else, you get some good information about pricing. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Don't forget to slap some postage on that bell so we can express ship new videos to you as soon as they drop. And last but not least, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. We will personally answer as many as we can. Thanks for watching.